Hey y'all, welcome to Smoke Beginnings. Today, I'm gonna to show you my version of a bacon wrapped smoked pork tenderloin. We'll be using the pit barrel cooker for this one. And a twist to this recipe is that we'll be using a maple flavored bourbon in our marinade. Now, some people may call this a Kentucky bourbon pork loin. Regardless of what people call it, I bet you'll end up calling it delicious. So let's get started. What we have here is our ingredients for the marinade. The full recipe and instructions can be found at SmokyBeginnings.com. I'll leave a link in the description. First, I'm going to start with my dry ingredients here, which is going to be two tablespoons of brown sugar, a half teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of black pepper, a half teaspoon of kosher salt, a half teaspoon of paprika, and then three to four tablespoons of your favorite rub. Today I'm using the Everglades all-purpose rub. It has a nice mix of salt, garlic, onion, and tastes delicious on pretty much everything. Next I'll move on to our wet ingredients, which are two tablespoons teriyaki sauce, five tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of minced garlic, and one fourth cup of maple flavored bourbon. I'm using the ABC Liquor Store brand, Cooper's Mark. I find this brand to be super economical and the quality is equivalent to other high quality brands. Now, if you don't want to use bourbon, you can swap out and use apple juice. We're going to blend or whisk together our dry and our wet ingredients until we have a nice smooth consistency. Now that we have our marinade ready to go, let's prepare the pork tenderloin. You will be looking for an unseasoned pork tenderloin that is roughly two to three pounds. In this package, I ended up with two very small tenderloins, so I'll be using both of them. Now make sure to trim any excess fat. In this instance, excess fat is the fat that I can pull away from the surface of the meat. Tip here is to sharpen your knife before the trimming. After we blended our marinade, we're going to add our marinade and pork loin to a one gallon size freezer bag. The tip is to put the bag into a mixing bowl so that you have a base and the bag stands up, making it easier to dump the marinade into. Or you can also use a spatula to get every single last drop of that marinade in there. So the pork tenderloin and marinade have been added to the freezer bag. Make sure to coat all sides of the meat by rolling the bag back and forth within the freezer bag before storing it in the fridge. Here's a tip. If you don't have a food saver or a vacuum sealer, you can get similar results by taking the 99% sealed bag and submerging it in a bowl of water. Our pork tenderloin has been marinated overnight. It is the next day and I've removed the meat from the marinade, rinsed off the leftover marinade and patted the meat dry. I have laid out an entire package of low sodium bacon, making sure to overlap each and every piece. Next, we'll add an olive oil canola binder and season the meat with our favorite rub, which in my case is the Everglades all-purpose seasoning i've also added some paprika and here i'm showing you that i went ahead and i trimmed up the pork tenderloin to fit our bacon it is now time to wrap the bacon around the pork tenderloin i'm going to take one end and bring it to the center then i'll take the other end and bring that to the center and then move on to the next piece of bacon this bacon also has a little bit of a stretch to it so i'm going to stretch then wrap stretch then wrap stretch then wrap and repeat the process until the entire pork line has been wrapped now that i'm done wrapping the pork tenderloin i'm gonna head, head and sprinkle on some paprika and some of that rub from earlier just to make sure that the bacon has been seasoned it's gonna taste delicious now that the pork loin has been seasoned it's time for it to go on the smoker Step one, open your favorite beverage. Step two, fill an entire chimney full of charcoal briquettes. Step three, after a few failed attempts of igniting your lighter, use a lighter to ignite your coals. Go ahead and uh, light up that paper that is down at the bottom of the charcoal chimney. We're going to let this charcoal sit for a good like 10 to 15 minutes while all the coals ash over. We're looking for a nice clear blue smoke and I'm going to use a heat resistant glove in this particular case to pick up the charcoal chimney now that our charcoal is ready. I'm going to go ahead and dump it on top of the coals that are at the bottom of the pit barrel cooker. I had cooked earlier in the day so I'm repurposing some coals that are still good and some wood that is still good for smoking here. So. Even though you've used these coals in the past, you can still use them again.
Now that I've emptied the charcoal chimney, I'm going to use my long handle tongs to move the coal around and just even out the coals uh, to get a nice even cook. Here I'll go ahead and put in my rods and my grill grate and then I'll put on the lid and I'll allow the smoker to come up to temp. I'm shooting for somewhere between 250 and 275 degrees Fahrenheit before I put the meat on the smoker and, and get this process going. This is also a good time to check your damper and make sure that is set to the correct position. The smoker has now come up to temp. It is time to put this bacon wrap pork tenderloin onto the smoker and get ready for the cook. I'm using the two spatula method in order to put this meat on the smoker. However, with these heat resistant gloves, you could easily pick up the pork tenderloin and put it on the grill grate. It's time to insert our meat probes and close up the smoker and let this thing smoke for the next 45 minutes to about a one hour. It's going to depend on the size of meat, how long this is going to cook. So I got an alert saying that my meat was ready and done to the desired temperature, uh, which happened a little bit faster than expected. So I actually brought a secondary meat probe out to test the accuracy of my primary meat probe. And as you can see here, uh, we're shooting for 145 as our internal temperature and in some spots it is right on uh it is definitely accurate here however there are other spots where it's lower so i'm going to want to give this just maybe like five ten more minutes while those uh areas come up to top now if you're looking for a medium rare it's going to be 145 now medium is going to be 150 and then anything above 160 is going to be well done a pork tenderloin reached the 145 mark in all areas so i went ahead and took it off the smoker and now it's time uh after a 10 minute rest i went ahead and sliced up this pork uh so now as you can see the bacon is kind of popping off but we can always put that back on uh, also you're going to see a little bit of pink within this meat uh, that is due to it being on the medium rare side still safe to eat still delicious still juicy still some of the best pork that you're going to ever have this pork tenderloin is delicious as is however if you want to add some barbecue sauce that's cool too i suggest a sweet barbecue sauce for those that are spicy first or a spicy barbecue sauce like pappy's triple x moonshine that's it for now. If you liked our video, make sure to come back for some more and check out our website at smokybeginnings.com. And until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling.